I knew was why it was so physical. And in the, in the uh, experience in 2008, when I went to this conference and that what happened that night, something was uh, put on me, on my head, and I was interacting with it. I, was in a, I went into a fear state, and I was hitting it. I was moving my hands. I was uh, very aware of seeing it and feeling it on my head. When my hands would hit it, I would feel it. Um, this was all extremely uh, palpable. Uh, what's the word? It starts with a T. Tac tac Tactile. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it was, and I know that, you know, there's a lot of things you can do um, just zooming into the brain, but it was really evident to me that this was a different type. There's many different levels of, of being able to be traumatized, but that this was different. And it wasn't the first time. It was the first time that while it happened and when I woke, woke up or came into the next morning, I was consciously aware of it. And even in the place, even though they had put me in an alter personality for programming, it was slipping in the whole time because I was, I knew there was something wrong. I knew this was not right. Well, there was you had something also, going on. You had also at this point begun, this is before your deep deprogramming, but you had begun the process of trying to deprogram yourself. So your awareness oh, yeah. at a level yeah, where it's harder to pull this kind of thing. I'm sorry. So you're aware when you have, once you have a certain level of awareness, I think it becomes increasingly difficult for these things to be pulled off without you having some crossover where you exactly. are consciously experiencing. The other thing I just have to bring up at this point, it's a little, is that it's interesting to me that this happened to you at a conference because to me, those, that seems like ripe grounds yeah. to experiment with yeah. new kinds of technologies on people whose who oftentimes people who attend these things, they'll be staying in the same hotel. A lot of them yeah. are obviously already traumatized. And then there's others yeah. there who maybe haven't been traumatized, but are open-minded to this whole weird world. And it's like there to them, they could almost be experimented on and they might like it. Yeah. Like, which sounds gross, but I think that some of these people who, you know, sort of, gawkers who go to some of these conferences just to marvel at the stories being shared or whatever. You just, you just verbalized what I've basically been. Actually, I did a radio show yesterday in Ireland, and I talked about this. Um, I'm calling these harvesting opportunities yeah. where they have people to, together. And, you know, we're going to have to be more explicit about this because there's a lot of people that are in a trap right now within the alternative media. So, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a great point, Emily. And, and uh, uh, it looks, you know, it looks like we're about at hour break time. I don't know um, if we can yeah. break gracefully at this point or Eliza, if there's something you want to. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. And that was this idea that all of these conferences, whether they be UFO conferences, chemtrail conferences, conspiracy conferences, super soldier conferences, which that idea just sickens me. Ooh. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like it, when I heard about that, it okay. sounded almost like a world tour of celebrity super, it just, it, it sickens me because it is so far from the truth of what the experience is that it's just gross. But, you know, there are people who, your, your point, Elise, is that a lot of people go to these looking for help and because they're desperate for help or looking for answers, there are also people that go at, to sort of vo as voyeurs you know, or just because they're dazzled with this or they're addicted to information that scares them. But Well, and I'll say this as well. There's a lot of agents, and I've said this on the show before. Yeah, One of the reasons why I stopped going to conferences is because of the spooks in the background of these things. And, you know, when you're... <laughs> When Not the even the right antenna goes up and you're going, mm, boy, that's, that really doesn't look good at all. Um, trust your instincts on that because I found out my instincts were right and I found out that, you know, the level of harvesting that's going on there, profiling, um, locating people, and basically being able to work a crowd energetically in a way that is like a, a ripple effect from mind control, is that's all present in the background of that if you can feel it energetically. Well, whipping people up into this state where they're creating louche, louche for, the, for, louche, for louche, all sorts of yeah. malevolent uh, entities that also yeah. are surrounding these conferences. Um, so let's let's start there, Lee. So what do you think? Well said, well said. And um, I even believe in my case, 
um, that I was programmed uh, at when certain things started to go off to go there. Uh, because when I look at, you know, it's not just the programming is put in in layers, the deprogramming yeah. uh, comes out or up in a very scheduled format. And it doesn't mean you can't break through it, but they designed how you're going to wake up if you start to wake up. So um, there, that was really quite a lesson for me. After many months in, in deep deprogramming, I began, because I, I recorded everything. I highly recommend recording everything that's going on with you. Don't censor anything. Just write it down or say it into a recorder. Don't censor it now. It will make sense later. And these are patterns. And, and for me, it was to go to the these uh, UFO conferences and um, I had some history in MUFON and a, even in a UFO abductee support group uh, years prior so I had that that baseline already set in and the way my memory surfaced was um, the incest and sexual abuse first this is a real general overview it wasn't exactly you know one two three but basically the incest and sexual abuse followed by alien abduction or interaction followed by military da 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 uh, so it was layered to come up in if it was going to break which it usually does in the old trauma-based mind control you hit a certain age or certain age range and it starts to come up so it was it was set that way so you know I have a lot of compassion for the people that are going as a victim who went covertly, very quietly, terrified. Uh, all my altars are several of them screaming, don't go, you're outing us, literally. Do not go to this conference, you're outing us. I didn't even know what they meant. Um, and so uh, I think a lot of people are programmed to go, maybe not so much anymore, I don't know, but why not? They can do that remotely. Um, but also there's, there's not a lot of places to go. I had nowhere to go. It was the closest thing, even though I knew it didn't, I couldn't talk about the military and intelligence agencies. When I went years ago um, in, the, in the 90s, I mean, it was taboo. It was taboo. I mean, you go to a MUFON meeting and start talking about military abduction. You didn't do that back then. You got closed down, shut out. And now it's, you know, totally super soldier, which to me, the whole super soldier movement not that there aren't real victims in there, okay? Yeah. But the super soldier thing was, it is a PSYOP. The entire thing, to me, was an intelligence operation and still is. I agree 100%. There, there, there wasn't, that wasn't people, good people trying to get, get it together. That was set up as an intelligence operation. And I know, have some information about some of the, 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 the people that were involved in producing it originally, uh, I know people who know them or have, you know, know them well, and that was definitely um, a setup from the word go. I don't think that everybody who's doing these things knows that. You know, when you get back to the ratio, and forgive me if I'm talking too much, but when no, you right. look at this, you know, like 95, in my opinion, 95, 98% of the people who work for them don't know they work for them. You're lucky if 2% they're actually working for the you know, the other side. Most people don't know they're working for them. It's compartmentalization at that level, too. Yes. Yes. So, Randy, so oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Randy, I, I, so Randy has had some run-ins, clashes with probably some of these same people that you speak of. And, yeah, I think we, we're all in agreement with what you're saying here. Yeah.